Brothers and sisters, this is it. Jujutsu Kaisen has come to its conclusion. It is official. Shonen Jump confirmed. Jujutsu Kaisen will reach its final chapter in issue 44 of Weekly Shonen Jump, which will be released on Monday, September 30. So yes, in a little over a month's time, Jujutsu Kaisen will end. And it is very difficult to describe the level of anxiety and also sadness that this very sudden conclusion brings. Of course, the Shinjuku arc was going to be the end of it all, and Gege confirmed that he wanted to end this series this year. But now, with the five chapter conclusion, it basically solidified all my doubts about how JJK will end. And I have to say, Jujutsu Kaisen ending like this is one of the saddest yet funniest things ever because I am 100% certain. Gege understands the level of sheer content that is left to explore in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Things that I'm certain cannot and will not be explained in the span in the course of five chapters. And if by some miracle that Gege touches on all of these different plot points, then they will not be conveyed or paced in the right manner due to the constraints in the number of chapters left. Megumi is a tragedy. Bless that poor boy's heart. I'm sorry, but it seems everything that I thought about his character is coming into fruition. He is a wasted treasure, and he is a complete tragedy of a character, and even Yuji knows it as he wants to save him. Akari and Uraume have been fighting for a year, and now the series is going to end. They used to actually joke about these things, but actually seeing this happen in real time, it's just a crazy time timeline that we're living in. And there's no way that we could actually forget the mountain of lore and backstory that we can get from a Han era flashback or even exposition on the events of Yuji's birth and Kenjaku's demented relationship with Jin Itadori. No, today we have to discuss what I actually think we need to see, and this possibly may be Gege's biggest save or his biggest failure, because I kid you not, this merger plotline might be the craziest letdown in the series, at least for me personally. Now, a lot of people are asking to see this merger and what it would mean and all of its content from Gege, but in particular, the reason why the merger is so important is because the merger with humankind and Tengen is the culmination of everything. A plan 1000 years in the making, and to be honest, the creator of this plan, Kenjaku, is not even here to see this through. Kenjaku left his will with Sukuna, and Sukuna is an amazing antagonist with an incredible and insurmountable amount of aura about him, but Sukuna himself is not invested in anything beside his own strength and desire. This merger will merely be a plaything for Sukuna. Yes, even characters like Kusakabe observed that Sukuna is a little different than Kenjaku. It's only an assumption, but in Sukuna's world, it may actually bring about an era like that of the Heian period, where sorcerers and curses rule the world in terror, blood, and battle. But what the merger brings is chaos that surpasses even that. Tengen can bring about the complete reconstruction of the Jujutsu world to create a new form of cursed energy. Kenjaku is the one who set this plan in motion but seeing as his ambition was cut short by a literal clown and the prodigy Okotsu, it just leaves so much more to be desired. And it's not like characters like Kenjaku or Sukuna would really need a lengthy backstory or anything. In fact, since this information about the series ending was announced, I've seen a ton of back and forth about what actual substance that we'd get from a backstory and whatnot. Sukuna is the way that he is for no particular reason. Since he was born, he was just a demon who lives for his own desire. And while that doesn't make him the best villain ever, the way Gege uses Sukuna as an evil god in Jujutsu gives his character so much prominence and respect without any real need for a proper backstory. But really, there still is merit in explaining the setting in which the King of Curses was born. That's especially the case with Kenjaku as well. The Heian era is the most important and critical time period in Jujutsu history, where sorcery thrived. You could argue that, well, maybe we don't need to see it. But Gege is the one who gave us many, many hints and clues that he was going to reveal about this Heian era. 
and it's not even subtle. We need to know why Kenjaku and Tengen were best friends. We're not just gonna breeze past that. These two people changed the sorcery world forever. Tengen basically founded Jujutsu in Japan and optimized cursed energy within the Japanese archipelago. How was Kenjaku involved with someone like that? No, in fact, Tengen's immortality and their evolution in their cursed form reminded Kenjaku of Sukuna. Does that mean that Sukuna's form is like an aggregate of cursed evolution? So what kind of connection would Sukuna have with Tengen? Why is Sukuna remarked as the Fallen. Does that mean at one point in time, Ryoman Sukuna was part of some divine creed and then he deviated from them? See, there is just so much that could be derived from all of these possibilities. And for the most part, I actually think that they are kind of necessary to fill in the gaps that Gege has left throughout all of this chaos. Gege himself makes a statement that he is working really hard to make his ending as satisfying as it can possibly be. Maybe. And honestly, he is a real comedian because surely he understands not everyone will find this ending satisfying and he is fully prepared for it. To me, it seems like Gege is really good at telling this story with long burning mysteries surrounding the characters in the world, but now there's no time for that anymore. Within five chapters, he has to use what he's already established in the story and make it pay off. And folks really kind of diss Gege's world building, but he definitely set everything up. However, However, now there is a serious issue in the time left to make everything all come together in Jujutsu Kaisen's world. The Koen games and the incarnated sorcerers were actually an incredible addition to Jujutsu Kaisen for its lore sake. Sorcerers of different eras clashing and fighting transcending in the modern world is absolutely insane. But many of the sorcerers were merely just like a means to an end. Really, all of them were like remnants of Jujutsu's long-standing history, but they were used more like tools of destruction to fuel the Kohling games. The fact many of them were incarnated into real people with real lives was crazy enough, and even Gege kind of regrets how he handled Sumiki's character because Yorozu definitely took a lot away from her value and made it hard to feel empathetic toward her when this raging psycho was parading around in her body. But in Gege's JJK exhibition interview, there were a lot of things that he wished he could do differently, especially in the Kohen games. Like he is basically self-aware because there was a lot of story to be told through the Kohen games, but a lot of that did not happen because because of the direction that he already went down. But right now, in the climax of the Shinjuku showdown, I think for the final remaining chapters, our main focus will of course be Yuji, Sukuna, and Megami. It's unclear if Megami can be freed from Sukuna without himself dying, but at this point he really came back at the very end of the series, so it's really almost over. We have about 95, 100-ish pages to actually save Megami, save the world, handle the merger plotline if Gege would do it, and possibly handle the problem with the ever-growing cycle of curses. Gege really had his work cut out for him. And while I seriously doubt that he's going to satisfy every plot point that he has left in the story, that does not mean that this ending is going to be that bad. I think Gege can make a really good conclusion with Yuji and Sukuna's character, but ultimately he won't have the time to focus on every loose end. So I hope at least for the most part that he creates an ending that is worthwhile and makes the reader feel good that they read his story. I truly hope that that is what Gege is aiming for. There is a slight possibility that maybe Jujutsu Kaisen could be like a part one stage or we'd get like a JJK Shippuden later on, but this story does not seem like the type to go down that route. At this point, Sukuna is pretty much the peak. Once Sukuna is defeated, there is very little else to explore besides the merger event. So if Gege would want to continue a series like Jujutsu Kaisen, then he'd probably have to leave the merger like an ultimate cliffhanger. The merger could open up a whole new world of Jujutsu and trigger the next evolution of humanity. Of course, depending on if Gege wanted to go that way. That is something very exciting to think about, but I think that this series is going to end for good because that's just the type of author that Gege Akutami is and he set out to create a story that he was satisfied with and wants to end it his way. 
It's a very strange feeling to think that Jujutsu Kaisen is actually ending, but I'm at least glad that Gege seems to be content that he got to end the series on his terms, but I think this conclusion will be all right. However, I also believe that it will surely leave much more to be desired. However, my brothers and sisters, what do you guys think? I'm positive that you guys have a lot to say about this, so let me know how you see these things ending. This has been Enemy Stand User, and I'll see you awesome guys in the next one. Bye-bye.